changing gears. And I'm looking at the block funding for universities and colleges in British Columbia. Mr. Chair, uh, in BC, uh, each school receives a letter that sets out the number of full-time equivalent students that the government expects them to deliver. And they receive a block amount of funding from uh, the ministry uh, that tells them how much money they have to spend in the year to deliver those spaces. Now, Mr. Chair, I have a question because I've divided the FTE expectations, the number of students that the schools have to deliver by the block funding. And there are some very unusual differences between similar schools. Clearly, there's a need for differential funding between a rural school and an urban school, uh, between a school with a heavy trades program and a school with less so, because there's heavy equipment needs and so on. But when I look at similarly situated schools in this budget, it seems like they're getting funded at different levels without uh, explanation. So perhaps the minister can explain the policy rationale behind uh, different per student funding levels um, uh, for example, at Capilano University, which gets uh, $6,933.72, and if I'm off by a few dollars, I hope the minister will forgive me, I don't have as many staff as he does, but uh, $6,933.72, and yet Kwantlen, a similar regional uh, urban university, gets $7,388.63. Now, 450 may not sound like a lot of money, but over 5,400 full-time equivalent student spaces, that makes a big difference in the level of service the schools are able to provide. I wonder if the minister could explain why Langara College receives $6,232 per student and Douglas College, a similarly sized college also located in, in an urban area, receives $6,986 uh, $6 per student. Uh, what is the rationale between these different funding levels for similar schools? Mr. Mr. Chair, on the uh, surface, uh, when you compare size to size in terms of the uh, institutions, uh, there are variations. And, and I, I think uh, the, the member opposite uh, clearly laid that out in terms of uh, that uh, funding variations between liberal arts programs and those programs that require investments in uh, heavy machinery and or health programs results in varying costs of different institutions. And, and use the example of, of Capilano University, Kwantlen Polytechnic University, Langara College and Douglas College. Uh, each one of those, while perhaps some of them are closer to size than the others, have a remarked variation in the programs they deliver while their infrastructure and overall uh, size may be somewhat similar. Uh, the example of Kwantlen Polytechnic in terms of the program mix in its trades facilities and the program mixture in its health uh, nursing programs is a variation from the example cited from, from the other university. Similarly, there are variations in the programs offered between Lung uh, Langara and Douglas, and variations in number of FTEs, a number of programs, some of them more, more expensive and some of them are less expensive to deliver, which results in a variation. So footprint and footprint does not equal similar funding. Member Vancouver, Point Grey. Well, I, I think the minister has absolutely outlined the ideal scenario uh, in terms of funding uh, schools for 
uh, British Columbia, but my understanding of the history of Capilano University being the lowest funded university in BC is that they skipped the university college uh, funding stage that all of the other regional universities went through. So they got a bit of a bump in funding when they were regional or when they were university colleges. And then uh, when they became full universities, uh, then they got another bump in funding. Capilano went straight from being a college to being a university, and that's why they're the lowest funded. So while I do appreciate uh, the minister's logic, I, I also uh, note, Mr. Chair, that Capilano University is currently cutting uh, equipment intensive courses in order to uh, move to less equipment uh, intensive courses because they cannot afford to maintain those programs at the current funding level. So this is a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy uh, if the school uh, can't afford to maintain those programs. So uh, I wonder, uh, Mr. Chair, whether uh, given that uh, the minister and I both agree on what the ideal scenario is, that if you're delivering uh, heavy machinery, uh, heavy intensive, whether it's technology or automotive repair or welding or whatever it is, um, that you would get more funding. And if you're doing liberal arts or you can have a class with less equipment, that you would get less funding. Can the minister commit to reviewing this funding and making sure that it's fair between schools and that it's not based on these historical artifacts, which is in fact the budget that we've been presented here and the budget that Capilano University has to live with?
Minister. Mr. Chair, uh, Capilano has uh, indeed expressed uh, concern about the level of funding it has received from the Ministry. And, and given its uh, new status, and it's not new, it's been a number of years, uh, uh, that, that they felt there's more required as, as, as it's a special purpose teaching university. However, uh, I must note, and perhaps a, list, a, a lesson in history, uh, when Capilano was designated as a teaching university in uh, 2008, it was agreed uh, that no additional funding would be provided for that change in designation. Now, time to time, uh, Capilano and all universities, institutions, and colleges do program reviews based uh, on several factors, notwithstanding uh, uh, student demand, and also labor market analysis, and do vary programs based upon a combination of both those factors. Uh, in addition to the grants or block funding that universities receive, and Capilano has received uh, uh, approximately $38.5 million, of which uh, some 18.68 came from AVED for their new digital media and film center. And uh, Mr. Chair, may I note it's a, it's a flagship in that digital media industry. Member of Vancouver, Point Grey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, I mean, certainly as the minister knows, as I know, as uh, students who attend Capilano University knows, the program that was most recently cut was a computer program that was highly successful that employers uh, came out to the community and went to bat for and said, we like these students who are trained this way. We like that program. Please don't cut it. And it was cut anyway because it was too expensive. So um, I, uh, as much as I appreciate the history lesson, I, uh, I think that there, there is something else going on at that school, and that is that they are chronically underfunded. 